Hey everybody, welcome back to Nightbringers Watch. I'm Falk, thanks for tuning in, and today it's time we... Uh, delve deeper into the path of our... <laughs> of our history teacher, Miss Rayford. Uh, we want to become close buddies with her because she might have an interesting quest for us. Your ah uh, yes, Fag from class 1A. The way you conduct yourself in my class and the answers you give to my questions, I admit they pick my interest. You are quite the interesting pupil, I must say. <laughs> yeah, I am interested. In why is your luck that strange? Tell me, Fag. Given a choice, which do you prefer? Things of old or things that are new? Uh, I. I am playing with the Violet Edition, so I like new stuff probably better than old things. <laughs> mm -hmm. Ah, so you prefer uh, the things uh, of the past, do you? The potential I saw in you was real after all. Yes, this one may indeed be of good use to me someday. <laughs> It's a child's play, right? It, it, it's a game for children of age 12. Wait, let me see. No, six and older. <laughs> ah, you can disregard that. I was simply thinking out loud. I enjoyed your little conversation today. You have my thanks, fuck. Oh, our little conversation. Greetings, my little students. Whatever you did yesterday is now a part of history. I was hoping to continue unraveling the morals that history has presented to us today. However, I imagine your ability to concentrate has been spectacularly derailed by my midterm. I suppose changing things up for fun and variety may be a good idea every now and then. So allow me to tell you an old fairy tale that has been passed down in Palir for generations. Once upon a time, there was a king who very much enjoyed collecting treasure. He was particularly fond of treasures from other countries. One day, a merchant from the east heard rumors of this king and came to meet him. The merchant laid out four treasures in front of the treasure-loving king. The four treasures were as follows. A vessel, a sword, a set of tablets and a set of beads. Seeing such rarities before him, the king leaped for joy. He shoved the merchant with gold coins and claimed all four of the treasures for himself. Ah, perfect timing to make eye contact, young folk. Answer me this. I said that one of the treasures was a set of tablets. What do you think these tablets were? Uh, wooden planks for riding on. I think it is. I don't think that it was handheld electronic devices. <laughs> uh. Correct, your daily pursuit of knowledge serves you well. These particular tablets were wooden and used as a writing medium in the East and in ancient times. As you may know, they fell out of popular use as paper become more universally available. For the king to consider these papers substitutes treasures, they must have been su of superb quality. That, or perhaps they had some amazingly profound teachings written on them. So, the king obtained these four treasures and on that very night, they said that a terrible disaster rained down upon his castle, reducing it to rubble by dawn. Oh, is that the time already? I wasn't done with my story, but alas. So ends today's lesson. If you are interested in how the story ends, you may come see me outside the class hours. <laughs> I am interested, that might, that might be the quest that I was searching for. And there she is. Why, if this isn't far from class 1A, are you perhaps interested in the rest of the old tale I told you in class? Yes, I am. Heh, <laughs> it is. Convenient that you would take the bait I presented in class. A vessel, a sword, a set of tablets and a set of beads. 
After obtaining these four treasures, the king's castle was destroyed. Why, you ask? Because these four treasures were actually four Pokemon. As these Pokemon were passed from human hand to human hand as treasures, they slowly became tainted by hubris and greed. Finally, after coming in contact with the rapacity of the king at that time, they awakened as disasters and began to rampage out of control. The king called four renowned Pokemon wheelers to defend the country and, after a fierce battle, these incarnations of disaster were quelled. It is said that these four Pokemon were then sealed away somewhere in Paldea. So, what do you think? Would you say the story is just make-believe? No. Ha, <laughs> very astute of you. I have read many historical disaster reports, personal journal, journals and the like. There's much to support the truth of this story. If I am able to prove the story's veracity myself, I will be sure to let you know. And we became even closer with Miss Ryford. Greetings, my little students. Whatever you did yesterday is now part of history. Today we will continue to unravel the marvels that history has presented to us. I trust that you all remember our lesson before the midterm exam concerning the great crater of Pelia and its interior, Area Zero. This mysterious crater captured the imaginations of many, including the former Pelian Emperor. 200 years ago, a group of explorers claimed to have finally reached its depth. The name of the team that achieved this great feat was the Area Zero Expedition. The team is said to have been made up of Pelia's best and brightest. Skilled battlers, brilliant researchers, talented individuals of all kinds. Among the list of team members was the name of a man who was an author and brilliant natural historian, Keith. After returning from the expedition to Area Zero, he used his literary talent to record the events of the expedition and publish them. Aha! <laughs> Perfect timing to make eye contact, young folk. Let's see if you were paying attention. What was the name of the team that first made it to the deepest reaches of the Great Crater? The Area Zero Expedition. Correct, to pick up on and remember that term I simply slipped into the flow of the lecture. You really are quite a clever one. The correct name uh, for this team was the Area Zero Expedition. The record of their activities written by the expedition member Heath can be found in bookstores and the like even today. This record is now known as the Violet Book. At the time, the entire region of Peldea was absolutely buzzing about Area Zero. The Violet Book was so popular that practically everyone had a copy. However, the book itself was full of fantastical description and illustrations of things that could never be thought of as real. The masses began to call Heath a liar. Even the truth of the expedition making it to the bottom of the crater was called into question. The Wilded Book was condemned to the shelves of used bookstores as just another book of wild paranormal stories. There is a copy on one of the bookshelves on the ground floor of the entrance hall. Feel free to have a read if you're interested. Oh, uh -huh. is that the time already? I must have gotten swept up in filling your minds with knowledge. This ends today's lessons. We will unravel more of history's enigmas together next time. Greetings, my little students. Blah blah blah. Today is our last class, so we would like to unravel the marvels that history has presented to us one last time. In our last class, I taught you about the Area Zero expedition of 200 years ago, correct? Alas, 200 years is not that long ago. Not that long ago at all. How unfortunate that our history lessons must march so inexorably toward the future. Would it not be more of an adventure to march toward the past instead? To start from our present and study history in re reverse? So you agree with me, do you, Funk? However, I'm afraid I risk incurring the wrath of our dear director if I stray from the curriculum. <sighs> I suppose I have no choice but to let the flow of time carry us toward the future. In this last class of ours, I shall fill your minds with the history of the terrestrial phenomenon. 
The technology behind Terra Orbs has its origins in Area Zero. Even after the Area Zero expedition supposedly reached the greatest deep depth, others continued to explore that area. And around 140 years ago, Pokemon cloaked in a mysterious light were discovered there. As you may have already guessed, these were, in fact, Terra Stellized Pokemon. However, when those who discovered these Pokemon brought them out of Area Zero, the light faded and the Terra Star phenomenon remained a mystery for quite some time. However, 10 years ago, uh, it might as well be present day, a certain someone you have definitely heard of unraveled this mystery. Ah, perfect time to make eye contact, young folk. Ask me this. What is the name of the famous professor who unraveled the terrestrial phenomenon mystery? Has to be Professor Turo. Correct. To think that you, a new transfer to our academy, could correctly answer this question. You must be very diligent in our, your studies. Approximately 10 years ago, the pro professor named Turo unraveled the mystery of the terrestrial phenomenon. He discovered that the shiny crystals down in Area Zero, or rather, the energy they emit, is what causes Pokémon to terrestrialize. This led the professor to invent Terra Orb technology and to develop a practical use for it. This technology was then shared with both the Pokémon League and our academy. Rumor has it that Director Clavel was one of the researchers on the professor's team. And as this story is much less exciting now that someone we all know appears in it, Modern history truly is dull, isn't it? Must ends my history classes. Our next session will be our final exam. Bring the wonders of history to the forefront of your minds in preparation. Greetings, my little students. It is time for our final examination. Summon your historical knowledge from the dark recesses of your minds and answer the questions. What is the area within the great crater of Pelia called? Area Zero. How many years ago was this academy founded? 805 years ago. Which of these did not appear in the Pelian fairy tale about the four treasures? Uh, polling fan. Which Area Zero expedition member wrote the record of the team's activities? Thief. <laughs> thief. It was a thief. How many years ago did Professor Tour invent Terra Ops? 10 years ago. Your time's up, put your writing utensils down. You must excuse the last question, it's too shallow and ridiculous to be on a history test, but alas, the director forced me to include it. So ends our final examination. You may ask for your scores at the school's front desk. I'm sure we managed to beat that test. These are easier than uh, the tests in um, Persona 4. Feels great to get the test out of the way, doesn't it? Let's take a look at our, your results. You must get 3 questions correct to pass the midterm exams and 4 questions correct to pass the final exams. And let's see how you did on your history test. You answered 5 out of 5 questions correctly. Cheers to that. I knew we would do that. That's a passing score, congratulations! Miss Rayford asked us to give this reward to any students who passed the exam. 5 experience candies M. Keep doing your best. Alright. That should do it. Now we should talk to Miss Rayford. Ah, she's in the entrance hall. Alright, and she's back at that bookshelf here, right? Uh, next to the entrance. Fuck, the time has come. The Curse of Treasures, the four Pokemon of Ruin. They exist. And I stumbled upon the truth in the newspaper of all places. Ha! <laughs> in an interview piece with a carpenter, no less. The Pokemon wielders apparently used sacred stakes to seal these treasures of Ruin shrines. There is a separate shrine for each of the four Pokemon and eight stakes driven into the ground in the area surrounding each shrine. Keep the power at Ruin at bay. Uh, of Ruin at bay. We found some of those stakes already, right? In other words, if all of the stakes for a given shrine were to be removed, 
It would release the Pokémon held inside. Don't you think it would be nice to free those Pokémon from the confines of their tiny little shrines, Fuck. Yes, indeed. Ha! <laughs> A kind soul, I see. You are proving truly useful. According to the descendant of the Pokémon wheelers in his story, you must have a bond with Pokémon in order to remove the stage. I'm sure someone as Pokémon savvy as yourself would have no trouble at all with that. You can choose for yourself whether to believe me or not, but I will mark the locations of these shrines on your map. We found at least one door of those. I don't think that I found another one. I'd rather go myself, of course, but skipping out on my classes to go adventuring seems to have made the director a little suspicious of me. Ha! <laughs> you can think of it as part of your treasure hunt. Treasures of ruin are still treasures after all. I hope you will investigate these shrines if you are at all inclined to do so. You feel trusted by Miss Ryford. Alright, that sells it. We are going to search those treasures. Okay, as you can see, we are in that in front of the door that we've uh, seen already and where we removed several stakes from. Uh, it now has an icon. And... She said there before, right? Throughout Paldea. So there's one in the west, that one in the south, where we are now. Once in the northwest, next to that Casaroya Lake, and to the east, the Fire Scourge Shrine. Okay, oh, they have names. Wait, how's that Grass Wither Shrine, where we are now? And she said those stakes are round, right? So we are going to search for them. Okay, here's one of those stakes, but for being around, Los, Los Platos is uh, quite the way. I think you could see at least the area where that door should be. Nah. Well, let's... let's... Uh, pull out that stake. Rumble and vanished. Okay. I do not know exactly how many stakes we've already gathered of those, but I think from the purple ones we found several. Okay, on to the next. If I find it. Okay, here is uh, the next stake. It's right. An artisan, which is far, far away from the door. You see, we are here in artisan. That's likely to the east of Mesagoza. Okay, southeast, and it takes all the way the uh, the doors all the way down here. There, there it is. So it's quite the range you have to search for. If you want to find those stakes. Mm, to be honest, I'm using uh, a guide for those stakes. I'm going to search for the others myself, but I think uh, that'll take some time and I want to edit this video as quickly as I can, so I'm relying on, on a, a guide for the purple stakes, which I did not found yet. So, this is the first one uh, that I used a guide for. Alright, on to the next. Here's uh, the next one. It's from Mezagosa, not that far away. If you take the east exit and uh, if your Maridon can at least glide, I think you can make it. Or you have to go all the way around from the south entrance. But it's up here, close to that. Uh, this. I don't think it's a bridge. 
It's more like a... Oh, it's a sleuth gate. Ah. Okay. Let's pull that stake out. Second one. Found with a guide. Right, on to the next. And here's number three. Found well, thanks to that guide that I'm currently using. I wonder if it says when we found all eight. All right. There has to be at least one more, I think. And the fourth stake found by the guide. Uh, and I wonder how I could uh, miss this one, to be honest. Oh, it's the last one. You heard a mysterious cry coming from the shrine. Perfect. Look at that. There's no seal, no stakes anymore and... We should open that door. A faint sounds coming from within the shrine. Will you touch the shrine? Yes! Touchy touchy! Her bang. Oh, it's open. What the frick's that? Scribe. Go, Pomod. Vucian's Tablets of Ruin. It's level 60. I need to be careful. I do not want to... Oh. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Ow! <laughs> oh! I don't want to, uh, uh, kill that Pokemon. But the music's cool. Alright, that is for poor mod. To whom should I switch? I think Mas Muscarada uh, would be the best choice. I wanted to say Masquerade. Night Slash? Please don't kill it. A Giga Drain. I think knockoff is weaker than power ah, just by a bit. Let's keep with at least one night slash. Not very effective. Did quite the number on me there though. Ah, okay. Renation. Well dodged, Miss Garada. Okay. Let's try it with a knockoff. Oh, <laughs> close. Okay, might be that an Ultra Ball is what will catch this. Wait, what? Premier Ball? Uh. 
Okay, Tinkerton, your time. I wish I had a... Uh, a Pokemon with me that could bring it to sleep or at least paralyzes. Luxury Ball? Oh yeah, I should call, uh, catch them with Luxury Balls. Comfortable Pokeball that makes a wild Pokemon quickly grow friendlier after being caught. Okay. Ah, come on. I only have 12 left of that. Tinkerton. I really should uh, sort my inventory. Come on! So close! Nice! Wuchin was caught! A darkened grass ruins Pokemon. It drains the life force from vegetation, causing nearby forests to instantly wither and fields to turn barren. Ooh. <sighs> All right. The Pokedex has been updated, and we call our first. Uh, I think it's. It it's. Some mysterious Pokemon, probably. And I think uh, that's the end for this episode. Next time, uh, we will search for the other three. So, until then, thank you for watching, liking, sharing, and subscribing, and bye!